Have you ever been in this situation before? You've made an animation in After Effects that has a lot of keyframes across multiple properties and layers, and you need to make a revision. But there's so much going on that even simple changes are gonna take a long time. If so, maybe Keystone is the answer you've been searching for. So Keystone is a tool for easily manipulating and coordinating keyframes, even across multiple properties and layers. It has a lot of handy tools, and today we'll briefly cover each one so that by the end, hopefully you can decide if Keystone is right for you. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Marston, and today I'm going to be covering Keystone for After Effects, which is a tool that I personally use all the time. It's probably saved me hours in the timeline panel tweaking and adjusting keyframes, and I think it can do the same for you, especially if you know some of its hidden features, which I'm gonna be covering in this video. In this video, you'll learn the basic points for using Keystone, and some of them aren't immediately obvious, but they are important. What each and every button for Keystone does, and a few points to consider before buying. And if you want to follow along, there is a free trial of Keystone available on its AE Scripts page. So I want to point out right off the bat that pretty much everything you can accomplish with Keystone, you can do in Native After Effects without it. And so the natural question is then why would I buy Keystone? And there's a twofold answer. The first part is that Keystone just saves you time. Things that you would do in the click of a button in Keystone might take you minutes without it. And the second part of that answer is that Keystone actually preserves the interpolation between keyframes better than native After Effects. And let me show you what I mean with an example. Here we are in the graph editor looking at some keyframes with some interpolation. And if we look the top of these graphs are pretty close to the 1000 pixel mark. So if I select this middle keyframe without Keystone, without using Keystone at all, and I drag it to the left, the top of this graph is now near 13, 1300, and the top of this one is around 560. I'm going to undo that, and if I use the keyframe nudge tool, the shift tool, to move this keyframe, now the top of these graphs are still in the exact same spot near 1000. It's just squished the interpolation. So the next piece of essential information to know about Keystone, at least in my opinion, are the hotkeys. So if you click one of the Keystone buttons without any hotkeys, it looks layer by layer. If you hold Alt, it will look property by property. And if you hold Shift, then it looks at the entire selection of keyframes across all the layers. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna select all these keyframes and I'm gonna click duplicate with no hotkeys. You can see that it's gone layer by layer and duplicated the keyframes to the playhead. That stagger is no longer preserved. And we'll look more into this in more examples in just a little bit. I'm gonna undo this. If I hold Alt and click, now even the stagger between the Y position and the scale right here has been erased. The first keyframe of every property in every layer has been lined up with this playhead. I'm gonna undo that. And now if I hold Shift and click Duplicate, you can see that the entire selection of keyframes, including their staggers, has been duplicated. And before we move on to the next section and really dig into the controls of Keystone, I wanna point out that it is fully integratable with K-Bar, if you have K-Bar. So you don't have to use the Keystone panel and have it somewhere in your After Effects interface. You can integrate all of the functions of Keystone into a K-Bar panel and on the AE Scripts page for Keystone, you can find a link to the Keystone documentation page and they go through exactly how to set that up. They even provide free icons in two different colors. All right, so here we are in After Effects and I'm gonna quickly run through all the controls of Keystone. And I've got this animation already set up, these three squares which each live on their own shape layer with their X position scale and opacity keyframed. So what if we wanted to exit these squares in the exact same way that they entered? The same animation just flipped. Well, because you can't just copy and paste keyframes from properties across multiple layers in After Effects, After Effects just duplicates the layers, you could go layer by layer, copy paste all these keyframes and then reverse them, but there's a much easier way with Keystone. You just select all these keyframes that you want to duplicate and you can click duplicate and then you could click flip. Now, I did click two buttons, but actually I'm gonna undo that because the third button I didn't click is called 
duplicate and flip. So you just click this button, it duplicates them, and it flips, flips them, uh, mirrors the interpolation completely, and now with one button, we have mirrored this animation. So next up, let's look at the stagger group of controls. We'll get to a line in just a second. So in this text field, you enter how many frames or how many seconds you want that stagger to occur, and then it will distribute the keyframes either descending, just like the picture, or ascending. This is referring to the layer stack. You can also randomize, and then there's an interval button, which I'll get to in just a second. So let's just say three frames. I have all my keyframes selected, and just simply clicking on this descending stagger, I play back the animation, and all these keyframes layer by layer have been staggered by three frames. So I'm gonna undo that though, and just show you again, if I were to hold Alt and click this, then it'll go property by property and create that stair step. And that's not what we want here, but it's just useful to know. So let's look at this random button for a second. And for that, I'm going to create this very quick animation of the rectangles scaling down. You can see they all scale down together. And to add some variety, we can select these keyframes, enter the maximum number of frames or seconds that we want them to be offset on the timeline by, and then we click the random button. And we can see that on the timeline, those scale down animations have been offset by up to three frames and just adding a little variety to that scale down. So now let's move on to the last button in the category interval. And here I have an example set up that hopefully clearly demonstrates what it does. We have these opacity keyframes that just go from zero to 100 and they're clearly not evenly spaced on the timeline. But if we wanted to evenly space them, we just select them again, enter the interval between them that we would like them to be distributed across and then click the interval button. And now there's a keyframe at every three frames. Great, so now let's move up to Align. All right, so here we have our original animation that we were working with before, and I'm gonna quickly stagger these so that we can more clearly see what is going on with Align. So now they're offset, and what if I wanted to move this animation, move these keyframes without moving the layers on the timeline to my playhead? Well, I could select them all, click and drag until I get there, or I can just click the Align button, but I'm gonna click it without holding any hotkeys just to show you what's happening. If I click this, Keystone goes layer by layer and aligns the first keyframe to the playhead. And in this case, that doesn't preserve our stagger. So I'm gonna undo that and hold the Shift hotkey, which looks at the whole selection across all layers and hit align. And now when it's moved this, this set of keyframes, it's preserved that stagger. And so this button is for the first keyframe aligning to your uh, current time indicator, your CTI or your playhead. This is for the last keyframe. So if I hold shift and click that, now the last keyframe lined up with the playhead. And then we also have first keyframe to the in point of a layer and last keyframe to the out point of a layer. So for example, if we moved all these over and we're just gonna line them up so that the first keyframes are all in a line, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just randomize these layer in points. If I select all these keyframes and now I click align to the layer in point, now it looks layer by layer and, uh, and it aligns the first keyframe in all the keyframes of a layer to the in point of that layer. So moving on to the stretch category of controls, the, these buttons pretty much all do the same thing just from different points. The first one is to stretch from the first keyframe of the selected keyframes, then the last keyframe and from your playhead. And you can either do it based on a percentage or you can input a duration like frames or seconds. And the percentage works just like the stretch column in After Effects. If you say 200%, then it will get slower by half. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna select these keyframes and input 50 and say stretch from first key. And you can see that now it does the math and it preserves the interpolation and it squishes those keyframes to take half the duration. Great, so it's pretty much the same as if you select keyframes and then you hold Alt and drag them, except it's much more precise. Next up are the copy and paste controls and I'm gonna do a little setup ahead of time, delete these keyframes and offset the layer in points. So normally in After Effects, when you copy keyframes from one layer and then you select other layers and hit paste, the keyframes are pasted with the first keyframe lined up with the playhead. It doesn't respect it where the layers are 
in time on the timeline. So that's where Keystone comes in. If with endpoint selected, we select these keyframes and say copy, and then we select these two layers and say paste with endpoint selected, now it pastes those keyframes at the same place on that layer relative to the endpoint. So if I were to shift these over and hit copy and then select these two layers and hit paste. Now that stagger, that gap between the first keyframe and the beginning of the layer is preserved when you paste those keyframes, which is quite handy. Then you also have same time and outpoint. Outpoint works exactly the same with endpoint, where endpoint measures the distance from the endpoint to the first keyframe. Outpoint measures the distance in time from the outpoint of the layer to the last keyframe. And then same time, regardless of where your playhead is and where the layers are in the, in the timeline, if you hit copy and then you select other layers and hit paste, it pastes those at the exact same time. So moving on, we have the miscellaneous category, which is my personal favorite category. And we can see we have this bouncing ball animation going on. And every time we hit a keyframe, the ball is in contact with this floor. But if we were to select all these, hold Alt and click and drag a few frames, now, although our animation has gotten a little faster, a lot of these keyframes aren't actually on frames anymore. Like this one, you can see the ball never truly gets to the floor. So if you select these and select this aligned nearest frame button, then Keystone finds the nearest frame to each keyframe that's between frames and it moves that keyframe there. So let's look at the overlap cleaning button. If we wanted to copy this Y position animation that causes this ball to appear to bounce, to this ball, we're gonna run into a problem because this ball already has some keyframes on its Y position and they overlap the time of this animation. So I'm just gonna hit Control C and then on this layer, I'm gonna hit Control V and I'm gonna disable the original bounce. You can see it doesn't work because these two keyframes that were already there are messing it up. So when you paste keyframes, those keyframes are automatically still selected. So if you click the overlap cleaning button. I'm going to undo that and redo it. Watch these keyframes. I'm going to click the overlap cleaning button. The keyframes that are in between other keyframes that are selected get deleted. Let me just set two more keyframes just for demonstration purposes. So if I select these two keyframes and I click overlap cleaning, that third one in the middle that wasn't selected will be deleted. Last but not least is the constant speed button, which is my favorite feature in all of Keystone. Thank you, Keystone, for this feature. And I'll show you why right now. So I'm gonna select the X position where we have some keyframes and go into the graph editor. So what we want to have happen is for this box to quickly move to the center of the screen, slowly drift across the center area, and then quickly move to the right. And we want that to all be a gradual, smooth animation. So I'm gonna select those keyframes and hit the Easy Ease button. And what happens when you Easy Ease is the in and out interpolation, is, the, the lines there, those handles, they're straight across. And what that causes is a brief pause. Literally the speed of that box moving across the screen hits zero. And the solution is to take these handles and point them at each other and point them at the neighboring keyframes and then you make them into straight lines here. I know this is probably painful to watch, but this is the process. And now we have a relatively smooth animation. It's not perfect, but instead of doing all that, we can just select these keyframes and make sure you're watching right here. I'm gonna click the constant speed button. Keystone magically does the math to have the interpolation smoothly transition out of this motion gradually or constantly go to the next keyframe and then smoothly transition out. And the best part of this is now, if I select these last two keyframes, if I were to just drag them over, it messes up that constant speed interpolation. But if you click the shift button as part of Keystone, it doesn't, the constant interpolation is maintained. I have no idea how they do it, but I'm so glad that that feature is there. So now that we know how all the controls work, there are a few considerations that I thought I'd mention before you buy. The first is that everything that Keystone does, you probably already know a way to accomplish without it. Keystone just makes it faster to work with keyframes. So the more keyframes in your project, the more valuable it becomes. So if you regularly create animations that have a lot of keyframes like rigging characters or complex motion scenes, then this tool will probably pay for itself 
quickly. Next, I have seen some of the controls that Keystone offers available in other add-ons for After Effects. So what buying Keystone would do is just gives you the convenience of having all of these controls in one panel with one set of hotkeys. And lastly, if it wasn't already clear, I just want to point out that Keystone is for keyframe management. It isn't a tool for tweaking interpolation and easing, so it doesn't replace tools like Flow, East Copy, or Keysmith. It would work really well with those tools. All right, hopefully now you know enough about Keystone to decide if it's right for you. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel and clicking the notification bell as well as the like button on this video. And otherwise, thanks for watching. I'm Andrew Marston and have a good day.